Supercut Special. Not a sponsor. Caught somewhere between an emulation information channel and an emulation entertainment channel. It's your friendly neighborhood posty. What's up guys and welcome to part two of my tutorial series where I teach you how to make your own cheats for emulators with Cheat Engine. For those of you in the emulation community that can't get enough of all things emulators, you're in the right place because neither can I. You may know me as the developer behind the RPCS3 update downloader. You may know me as the person that creates tons of emulator cheats and makes them available on my discord or the person that keeps releasing strange breath of the wild role-playing videos on any social media platform that'll have me if you don't know me i did all that stuff that i just said and now i'm teaching you everything i know about making cheats for emulators in the last lesson we covered hacking health when we have some idea of what our health is today is installment two in my hacking health series hacking life bars where we have no idea what our value is okay time to act professional roll the intro the first thing we'll want to do, as always, is to attach Cheat Engine to our emulator. The method we'll use to find the address is typically the method I use for finding a health bar or gauge value. We don't know the exact value because there are no on-screen values displayed, but we can see the sword's energy level so we can use that to make some guesses as to how we should search. Anytime we have a bar or gauge we're trying to find, we'll want to use a float value type. Unlike byte search, float handles decimals, which is oftentimes what bars or gauges use. Since the Wii U uses Big Indian, we'll want to do a Big Indian float search. If you don't see Big Indian value types available in Cheat Engine, you'll need to add them. Don't worry, it's easy. I'll include my quick tutorial at the top and in the description. I'll also include a little list I've compiled that includes several consoles and their Indianness. I plan to make a standalone guide to this in a future video, but for now, all you need to know is whether your console uses big or little Indian. We'll do a new search and set the value type to float big Indian. And since we have no idea what this value could possibly be, we'll set the scan type to unknown initial value. Then we'll search. Next, we'll do something to change the value. In this case, it's depleting our sword energy. Then we'll continue searching with a decreased value search. Now we'll let it fill up. We'll search again for increased value. Now, since we made no changes, we'll do a few unchanged scans. It's good to do several of these to weed out anything that's changing. We know our sword value is not changing, so anything that is changing is not our value. We will repeat these steps a few times a few different ways to make sure we're weeding out all the values that we're not interested in. Once it feels like we've reduced the results as much as we can with scanning, then we'll dig in and see what we've got. Even though we've used a float search, which handles decimals, the resting value often appears as a whole number. So these are the results I typically want to explore further first. Now we can just double click any of the results to add them to our list so we can explore them further. Now that we have a list of candidates, we'll want to activate each to see if they have any impact on our sword's energy value. Let's start at the top. We'll activate the first one and see if our sword still runs out of energy. Looks like it did, so this one is no longer a candidate. We can wipe this one. Next, we have several values that are pretty similar. What we'll do is we'll highlight them all and press spacebar, which will activate them all. Looks like our sword still ran out of energy, so these are not it either. We can wipe all these. Okay, one left to try. If this isn't it, we can go back to our results and add some more to try. We'll activate this one and test. Okay, looks like the sword's holding its power. This is good. Another thing we can do to double check is to set our value to zero. That should wipe out our sword's energy. Looks like it did. So this is definitely our address. Next, we'll need to find out which instruction is giving our address its value. To do that, we'll right click our address and select find out what writes to this address. This will open a dialog box that will display anything that is writing to this address. 
right away we can see it found two things writing to our address. But the question is, are they controlling our sword's health value? To find out, we'll highlight one of these and select Show Disassembler. This will open the memory viewer with the relevant line already highlighted for us. Next, we'll right click the line and select Replace with code that does nothing. Just click OK to the next code box that opens. This will completely stop the instruction from interacting with our address. It does this by replacing each byte of our instruction with a 90 or a NOP, which means do nothing. This will tell us if this is the instruction actually controlling our sword's energy value or not. And looks like nopping that instruction had no impact over our sword, so that's not the one. Now we'll just right click the nop, restore it to its original function, and move on to the next one. We'll go through the same process here of nopping the instruction and testing our sword. All right, looks like this one's also not it. So we'll restore this one and move on to the next. Something to be aware of is the count. This tells you how often your address is being written to. An instruction that only writes when your energy sword levels change is probably a good candidate to pursue. Let's continue testing. Okay, looks like this one's also not it. That leaves us with one left to test. All right, it took us a few tries, but I think we got it. Let's restore it back to original and begin our next step of scripting the cheat. The first step in scripting our cheat is finding a unique AOB. AOB stands for Array of Bytes. This is a series of bytes that is unique, meaning this particular arrangement of bytes occurs nowhere else in memory except for the address of our instruction. This will help our cheat to refine the address after a restart. Now with our instruction highlighted, we'll copy its bytes. To do this, we'll right click, select Copy to Clipboard, then select Bytes Only, No Address. Then we'll perform a new Array of Bytes search. Notice when we switch to Array of Bytes, it automatically checks the hex box. This is because these bytes are in hexadecimal, so we definitely want this box checked. Since our goal is to find a unique AOB, we'll keep adding bytes and searching until our scan returns only a single result, our target address. Our is Story is ready. Perfect, we found our unique AOB. We now have everything we'll need to script our cheat. I've included a template for nopping any instruction you could want to nop. All you have to do is edit three lines. To begin, just double click script under the value column in the cheat list. Here is where our unique AOB will go. This is what the cheat will use to search for our instruction. Here is where the original instruction goes. This is what Cheat Engine will use to return our instruction to normal when we turn our cheat off. Here is where we will tell Cheat Engine how many bytes to nop. As we discussed earlier, for every byte of our instruction, we want to place a 90. The total number of bytes should be equal. Now just click OK and we're ready to test. Let's try activating our cheat. Looks like it's behaving exactly as we'd hoped. You may notice that each byte has what is essentially its own address. When nopping this way, it just expands each address. In other words, these addresses always existed even when they contained our original bytes. We're just seeing them individually now. As opposed to across, they're just expanded down. Now let's see if it actually worked. Awesome, it's working. Now, let's try disabling it and see if things go back to normal. You guys, I think we did it. Hacker man. You guys are some serious hackers now. I never doubted you for a second.
If you learned something new in this video, remember to hit that like button. If you want to keep up with all my latest guides and cheats and releases, hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be releasing things all the time for you guys. Thanks for watching, guys.